Have you ever found yourself going through some of your old photos that you took and you were just completely blown away by how bad they were? Yeah, that was me about 10 minutes ago or so. So I decided to hop online and record this video. It is 12 in the morning right now where I'm at, but I grabbed some old photos that I took before that I edited and thought were awesome. And now I'm going to go back and try to re-edit them to see if I can get a different look to them. So let's roll that intro and get the video started. So like I mentioned, we got some old photos that I took once upon a time, and we're gonna go back and just re-edit a few of them to see if I can get a new look to them. Uh, we're gonna start with this one of Tracy. This is actually the first shoot uh, I did with her, and this was maybe early 2019, or summer of 2019, I believe it was July. And this shot right here was inside of a little wood area. I thought this was a really cool shot and uh, this was my first time actually using like foreground with like the leaves and everything to kind of give a different perspective to the photo. So I'm going to go back and kind of take a look at this one. I'm going to put on the screen what my old edit was. Should be right in here. Yep, so on the left hand side, this is what my old edit was. I even have my old uh, Decalwell Photography logo on there, that's cool. But this is the old edit on the left side and then on the right side this is the version that we are going to take a look at right now. So we're gonna jump right into the action here. I'm gonna apply one of my presets because it's gonna make the workflow for this a lot easier and I know exactly which one I want to use. I actually created a new one called Golden Sun and if you see kind of the before and the after without and then with it attached, it gives like that dark skin, that glow, that like a uh, golden glow that I love within portraits, right? It's like the sun is peeking through this little gaping circle um, that is open from the forest. So I really like this one and I'm going to go with this because if we look at our older edit, it's more like, how am I gonna word this? It's darker, the shadows weren't raised. Um, I feel that I was going for more of a color pop instead of the natural, because leaves aren't ever gonna be like this overly saturated at least not where i'm from so um i was going for more of the just darker mood for this but in our new edit here we got the leaves that are going to be just kind of regular color we might bump up the color on the leaves as we go along here but let's continue um so i have the golden glow what i want to do is hop into the saturation portion right now and i just want to drag that slider up just a little bit because i want to add just a little bit more color to that and you see as it increased from four to 14 we'll go actually i think 14 might be too much let's stop at let's stop at nine again it's all about playing around with which one uh so if i go back to the original just to show you it was at four to start and then we drag it up some i'll hit nine i think nine is a really good point because we still get that that glow i was referring to as well as um the color isn't like overly orange or anything weird like that the vibrance i left around 12 that can be tweaked and adjusted however you want to but i'm just gonna bump it up just a little bit more now that i'm looking at the photo i still want like that natural leaf color but we can always add just a tad extra bit of color to it there's nothing wrong with that i also would love for the photo to be just a tad bit brighter because we went for moody in the previous one here so i'm going to make this a tad bit brighter i'm going to maybe bump up these shadows a little bit more we'll go from 37 to around 49 uh, about 12 spots i think that's good and then i'm going to bring up the exposure just a tad bit we're at plus 97 right now we just drag up our slider till it looks good oh that's nice let me go up a couple more notches i think that's too much go back down 132 132 looked like a sweet spot here i kind of go in and just inspect see how that looks yeah i i like that a lot okay the next thing that i want to do is go ahead um this 
little twig down here is gonna annoy the hell out of me, okay? So I know in the other picture, I know I'm swapping back and forth, but in the other picture, it's still there. So I guess I didn't remove it at all. I am going to crop it off the bottom and the top because I did shoot this with my A7R 3 So there's more than enough uh, room for me to kind of play around with this and still not lose any actual quality to the photo. So I'm gonna crop in some on both. I'm just gonna come all the way up past that little nasty branch there. Then I'm gonna bring it down just so that we're kind of evened out. I'm gonna leave some of the leaf at the top as well, just so it has another cool effect. You kind of see it like it's like a vignette effect on the top of the photo. And I like that a lot. I'll actually maybe bring that back down some. Yeah, the, all the leaf isn't horrible. And then I can also too, just grab the um, spot removal and then kind of go in and just paint over that and then just match it in an area so that it looks the same. I think you just finish off any last minute things like that. Boom. So this is what we are looking at right now and I am 100% okay with this. I'm gonna compare this one to the old one on the screen and then you guys let me know in the comments what you think of both. We have our file here. What I'm going to do, I have a couple presets that I can use for this. I know I just used the Golden Sun one, but I am going to add the ColourPop one instead because I think that is going to bring out a lighter shade of her kind of uh, beige um, trench coat here, as well as kind of like bring out some of the uh, texture and tones in her skin too. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap that ColourPop preset on. Yeah, I like. oh my God, yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, I didn't have any of these presets when I actually first started with any of these photos. So um, it's really cool to be able to go back and edit your work based off of the knowledge and information that you have right now. So the colors again were super increased. I mean, I can honestly leave this photo alone right now, but I want to kind of go in and just do some of the smaller things uh, just to make it perfect. So I'm going to just check around the jacket areas here to make sure that there's not like any lingering dust uh, particles laying around. Usually you take care of this stuff in Photoshop, but um, if you miss some, it's okay. There's multiple tools and multiple platforms that you can use. All right, I like that. So uh, in the background here, you know, the highlights are a little blown out and that's because it was a sunny day. I remember trying to pose her in areas where the shade was most uh, mostly consistent. So I'm gonna maybe bring down the highlights just a little bit to see if I can save a little bit of this background. Um, I doubt it, but we'll try it anyways. So we're at negative 19 right now. I'm gonna pull that slider down some. Let's go all the way. See, it's not bad. So let me just bring it back. We were at 19. I will go up to 30. Let's do 30. I like 30. And then we can also play around with the blacks as well. I'll increase that just a tad bit. You know, the 40 is cool. And then we'll bring up our exposure just a tad bit. 1835, 26. I like. I like 30, no, I don't. I like 26 better. 26 is cool, let's use that. Our vibrance is up, because you can kind of tell from the strength of her lipstick here. Oh, but he, now that we zoom, zoomed in, guys, we do have a little bit of um, chromatic aberration here. So what I can do now, I can scroll over into our lens correction panel over in the Lightroom section, right hand bottom side here. And I can just go ahead and just pull that up a little bit just to get it going. You see, perfect. You look now when it's all the way at zero and I just pull it up to maybe two, even three to be completely sure. And that bad boy is gone. I like that. So let us do a compare of before and after on the screen here and uh, we'll see what we're looking like.
last but not least, we're gonna scroll back over and do one more photo because we went through the other two kind of fast here. So I'm gonna scroll over to one more photo. Um, oh, wow, yes. Ooh, this was a good one. This set was fun. Uh, this was actually my first time shooting with Deja and this was in 2019 of December, I believe. Yeah, it was actually really cold outside, hence the um, large fur coat she has on. But this photo right here, uh, there were a couple things why I love this. I actually rented from my local camera shop. This was, okay, let me slow down some. This was literally a week or two after. I just got my A7R 3 so I was super excited to go out and start shooting. So I um, asked Deja if she wanted to shoot. She said, of course. And I had rented the 17 to 28 Tamron lens for the first time because literally a day after this shoot, uh, Kia and I were going to New York for Christmas. So um, a lot of things were happening within this little time frame. But I remember that was my first time using a lens outside of the regular like 85 millimeter focal range. Um, and I think this photo in particular, if I look at the histogram here, it was shot at 28 millimeters at f 3.2 iso uh 640 and then uh 100 one over 200th of a second for the shutter speed so uh, we got a lot to work with here if i go over to my let me just drag over this was the original edit that i did back in 2019 so just kind of based off a of memory i'm assuming i cropped in because i did not like the extra space in the, at the top here but now working, uh, after working with like so many different photos and trying to get various perspectives in your images, I am not gonna get rid of that extra space up there. That is just a me thing for this video. So if you guys let me know um, after this final edit is done, if you would have kept the extra space at the top here, even though like all the highlights and stuff are blown out, or if you would have um, cropped in like I did on the original edit. But I think the reason why I cropped in was because of the sky being completely blown out and not having uh, my settings correct. But an easy way to, again, kind of go over that is to turn an image into black and white if you aren't happy with like the colors and some of the things that are going on within the photo. And I'm going to keep the same theme. I'm going to go black and white as well for this edit here. So let's go over to the regular photo and get started. All right, so the last preset that I'm gonna pop on for this final photo is my black and white moody, but it's not gonna be the original one that I'm usually using for some of my photos. I made a version two, and that is gonna give me a different perspective of just moodiness and the gray tones uh, for these black and white photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to the image. All right, so if I go back up here, First thing that I know I'm going to do is bring up the shadows a tad bit. I do want to see her face, the bit that's not being covered by her hair up here. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows just a tad bit here, just to decrease the blacks a tad bit. All right, um, the highlights are fine. I'm not gonna bother those at all. What I will do is just bring up the exposure just a tad bit. So we wanna, want it to be black and white but not too dark that I can't see her face. And I think this is cool right here. So from this section, let us go. I'm gonna actually swing down to the um, grain section. And I want to add like just a little bit of grain on top of it. And I think that, I think light is good. I can also hop into the, um, where is that at? If I scroll down to the effects panel, on the right hand side and I can control the size and the amount of grain too. So it's at 29. If I maybe just increase it a little bit, that's I'm, of course I know it's not a little bit y'all, but I was at 29. So if I go up to 40, I like 40 a lot. I'm gonna stick with 40 right here. And last but not least, I just wanna bring up the contrast just a little bit so my photo isn't looking completely soft. Uh, we can go up to, I like, I like seven. We're gonna go with seven. I'm going to leave this little scarring on the rail here because I feel it adds uh, to the story. It just isn't a completely clean rail. You can see like the little scratches and bump marks and stuff right here too. So um, I, I really like the type of feel it adds to the image. So that's why that is left uh, particularly there for that photo. 
Um, last but not least, let me see. Can I straighten this a little bit? I know it's supposedly it's at a, I shot this at an angle. I was underneath there and then kind of like tilted my camera some. So let me. Yeah, if I do this, I don't like that at all. And I know that you can like manually go in and kind of um, adjust it to however you see fit. And we can see if some of that works. But overall, I'm kind of OK. Yeah. And see, it's all about going in and playing around to see what you can find and make better about your image. So we're going to stick with this one. This one looks pretty cool. And we'll compare these on the screen right now so you guys can see from the original edit to what it looks like right now. As always guys thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments what you thought of each of the edits versus what they were before if you enjoyed the older versions or if you're actually digging the new versions here uh, also let me know if you guys enjoyed the editing session i really love doing videos like this so honestly regardless if you like them or not i'm probably going to keep posting them but if you do like them i greatly appreciate it go ahead and click that thumbs up to show me that you like the video and click that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content. Thanks again, and I'll catch y'all tomorrow because I am getting some sleep. Peace.